to that. And I would really like to uh, welcome Elaine Wooten back again to Passwords.com. She also did a talk in Trondheim in Norway last year. Uh, she has an incredibly cool day job. Which you can ask me about. <laughs> <laughs> she will probably tell you. And now she's going to talk about passwords and cyber caliphate. In, I, in one way, I am looking forward to this. And in another way, I think this talk has a very dark and very important side to it. So please listen carefully. Thanks, Fair. Yeah, so I wasn't going to come because I've been doing research on uh, the Islamic State for about 10 months, and it scares me. So I was like, I'll stay home. And then I was like, OK, I might as well come. So this talk is put together in the seven days since then, but with materials I've gathered for the last year. Um, so who am I? Uh, so I do security research, not just security research, I do other kinds of research. I do projects that last six months or a year, and then I do something else. Um, and so about eight months ago, I started paying attention to the presence of um, the Daesh Islamic State people on Twitter, um, and then it expanded out from there. So I do whatever security research I'm interested in. Last year's presentation was on behavioral biometrics as a way to extend the usefulness of passwords, right? Totally different than this, right? So I've gone to the next thing. I work for the US government part-time. I have a really cool job. You can ask me about it. Um, but I do not represent them here. They have nothing to do with what I'm doing um, on the internet. My job has nothing to do with the internet, nothing to do with ISIS. Um, they don't know I'm here. It's okay if they find out I'm here. They don't probably care if I'm here, but they don't know I'm here. They didn't, they don't have anything to do with this. Okay. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to say is I, I sort of, uh, a couple hours ago, had this vision of myself, and I thought, you know what I am? I'm an anti-ISIS cyber vigilante. That's what I am. I'm out there. I'm going after them. And then I was like, nah, it's kind of more like neighborhood watch. <laughs> and then I realized it's more like the little old lady sitting in the house, like throwing shit at people. <laughs> so just full disclaimer, that's who I am. Um, this, this is required. And I'm going to do a really bad thing. Pear. <laughs> OK, I'm actually going to do, uh, the, the way I made this make sense, there are three kind of mini talks. The first one's going to be about um, sort of who the ISIS hackers are. Uh, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about passwords that I obtained from leaks that they made. Or we call them not leaks, because they're not hackers. Um, but they are leaks that somebody made at some point in time, and they're repurposing them. Some of the leaks are their leaks, um, or some Malaysian guy who gave them the leaks. Uh, and then the last thing is going to be the role of passwords in this version of cyber warfare. Like, if we think about real cyber warfare, it's like taking down critical infrastructure and taking down the financials. They're not going to do that. They don't have the skills to do that. But there is this sort of smaller scale cyber warfare going on, and passwords play, passwords and the ability to crack things plays a role in that. OK, so this is some of the names they've gone by. At the beginning, the press was calling, the, calling them the Cyber Caliphate. They call themselves the Islamic Cyber Army. And uh, the people who don't like them, like me, called them the Islamic Clown Army. And we photoshopped their images with clown noses and did all sorts of things like that. Um, right now, they're calling themselves the elite section of the Islamic State, something like that. Uh, there was another crew that is probably the same people. They called themselves, just very clever, called themselves the terrorists. I don't really get that. Um, and then there are a few people still using the Anon Ghost group name to do activities on behalf of the Islamic, the Islamic State. I'm going to do that a lot because it's not an Islamic State, but it's OK. Um, so Anon Ghost was actually a group that started not sure how long ago, maybe 15 months ago, maybe longer. And it's a pro-Palestine hacker group um, uh, spun off of Anonymous. So it is an anonymous group that hacks primarily Israel on behalf of Palestinians. And there's a few people have spun off from that and have gone 
um, to ISIS. So it's a little confusing because the pro-Palestine Israeli hacking people are not ISIS people. So they're, they're using some symbolism, but it's two different groups. OK, so what do the Islamic State ISIS hackers do? Um, they mainly deface websites. They do a lot of defacing. Um, they hijack Twitter accounts. Um, they hijack them primarily so that they have uh, lots of extra accounts lying around, which I'll tell you about in a couple minutes. Uh, for the, oh, they also do release these data leaks. Most of them are not their leaks, um, but some of them are. And I'll show you some of those. Um, uh, also, a lot of the things they declare are leaks are actually just things they Googled. So they'll go, you know, here are the home addresses of the members of parliament. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Right? Things like that. And here, here are the uh, domain addresses for this group of, of, of government entities. So things that are just known, and they make a big deal about it. Um, so I, I'm calling the group that outs them this unofficial internet truth squad. Um, right now, I think the, the person who did most of this is part of a group called the Ghost Security Group, but it was called something else when he did the images I'm going to show you. But basically, what they would do is find the source of the original leak and then do these images, which I'll show you. Um, now, this is the real kind of risky, dangerous part. Some of the lists are actually lone, for lone wolves. And they say specifically, this is a kill list, kill these people. And then they have the, the, the leak. Those don't tend to be password user name leaks. They tend to be home addresses um, and other details like that. OK. And Pear asked me this, why are they hacking? I mean, they're taking over this territory. They're doing whatever they're doing. Why are they hacking? The only reason that that group is hacking is that a young man from the UK joined Islamic State, joined ISIS. His name was Junaid Hussain. Um, he went at Strick. He was a hacker um, from not here, but here. Uh, and he went to Syria, and he married a, a woman he'd met here, older woman, um, who was a notorious hacker slag. Sorry for anybody that insults, but that's what she was. Um, and they went to Syria, and they did a lot of stuff on social media to recruit new people. Um, and they also arranged for a bombing to happen, I think it was in London. And because of that, and because of their social media activity, the United States droned Junaid Hussein, and they killed him. So that was a phase of the hacking, the pre-Junaid getting droned phase, and then there's the after. Junaid had some skills. Junaid was teaching other people his skills, and then he was dead. So um, what happens when he's gone is basically just stupid, lots of stupid crap. Um, Right. This is him, and this is actually the image. It's really out of focus because this is a cutout of the image from the who are we going to drone notice. And uh, right now, the who are we going to drone notice has his wife. Um, she's on, they're trying to find her. <laughs> she's still, um, she just posted uh, the guy who killed, I think the guy who killed Osama bin Laden, she just posted all of his personal details and said, you all go, go get him. Um, so that's, that's what they do. All right, these are a couple of images that I stumbled upon I wanted to share. The first, the top one, I've only ever seen once. And it's kind of cool because it's this armored up guy and you know, he has this cool name and we've never seen him since this one time. The bottom image is that Anon ghost that I was talking about, which you, you will see it's not regular anonymous and it's not the Islamic State, it's um, the pro-Palestine hackers. All right, here's the image that the terrorists did. And again, I don't know whether this is the same, um, some of the same people that are on the crew now, um, but the terrorist organization of electronic jihad, that's the kind of language that they use. And these are more images um, from that group. They do a lot of when they deface, they, they post it at this zone age, which I'm sure real hacking people know about. I don't. <laughs> um, and then a lot of this we are terrorists language. So in May, they put out their first video. They put out this video about you know, that they were taking over the cyber world, and they were going to control everything, and they had all the American data. Um, and it, didn't, it wasn't particularly good or particularly credible. But the thing that was interesting about it is, first of all, they wanted to tell us. 
not the whole world, they wanted to tell America. And that is who they did hack first, was US. Um, but the thing that was interesting is this image up in the right is a media emblem. And tip, for the most part, before that, the rest of ISIS didn't pay any attention to this hacking stuff. They pretty much just ignored them. Because they don't get it. It's a different world, right? This is the first sign that they're getting some recognition. In the bottom, we've got two of the Media House logos. We've got the flag and then the, the, um, the guy with the computer screen. So this is, this is a, a sort of official Media House emblem for technology you know, warfare. Um, and this line was just the And soon you won't have any control over the internet. I don't. I'm not really too worried that they're going to take over control of the internet, but <laughs> there's a lot of this kind of language, lots and lots of spelling errors that, you know, they're just, they're kind of sloppy. Okay, this is the current crew. So after Janaid dies, there's a, is blown to bits. There's a lull, and then the crew starts to do things. Um, the crew starts out, and it's the five, it's Lion, Cyber, Aldmar, Dr. Isis, and and engineer ISIS. And it's that five. If you notice, we have elite sectione. Of, so they spell stuff wrong all the time. They spell Islamic wrong. They spell state wrong. They spell everything wrong, um, which is great fodder for trolls who want to troll them. So um, yay. Uh, at some point, they pick up a bunch of extra people. They end up being nine. And then they go back to seven. And then they're six, and now they're five again. Um, these are three of their emblems. If you notice the one on the, on the left, that's the Anon Ghost face that we saw before. Um, uh, and that's Ang Isis uses that emblem. Uh, he's the one who is uh, responsible for stealing all the Twitter accounts um, and then re, uh, redistributing, them, redistributing them. So the strategy that the good guys have is to get as many ISIS supporter accounts suspended as possible, and their goal is to put them back into action as quickly as possible. Um, and so they, they generate, they create new accounts, and they steal accounts. They have, at the last I got a number, they had 55,000 accounts sort of waiting. They've probably given out five, 6,000, so they have lots. We were afraid they were going to make a bot, but they don't seem to be able to make a bot, so that's good. Um, OK, so before the sort of systemized hacking starts, there's some other stuff that happens. And this is one of them. They put out this paste bin, and they've defaced all these sites. I take a quick read of the kinds of sites they're defacing. Basically, they're scanning out there for things. This is maybe based on Janaid's teaching, they're, they're, they're learning. They're learning to scan and look for sites that have something that they can get into. Um, for people who are hackers, they're using uh, a tool called um, Yemeni Shell. And often on their screenshots, you see the header on their screen, and it, you can see it. They've got a bookmark <laughs> for Yemeni <laughs> Shell. Um, and uh, I, I have it. I managed to get it, but I don't know what the hell to do with it. So, um, Also, on this one, you see they have the Media House emblems. All right. This is pretty much the last time we're going to see the Media House emblems. As soon as Janaid is gone, they don't have any more credibility. Um, they seem to be wanting to get the attention of the Islamic State, get some recognition, um, but they're not, they're not getting it. Until, of course, yesterday when they put a new video out, just for me, they knew I was coming, so they put a new video out, but they pretty much lost it. Um, this is one thing they did manage to do. They took over, they hijacked the Twitter account of the US um, Central Command, so that was, but you know, it's Twitter, and it's not that hard to take over a Twitter account. OK, so we're going to look at some of the passwords. Again, they weren't leaks. They, they, and you'll see, I have specifically what the sources were for some of them. The first thing that I knew that they snatched was what appeared to be a procurement system that involved US government transactions. And it had full name, phone number, username, password, everything, thousands and thousands of records. Um, and uh, you know. I don't know why they released this stuff. I mean, it might have been useful for them to just use it, use it for fraud, but they didn't do that. They released it. Um, the next thing they released, they were going after 
I believe that was because they were trying to find US military. The next thing that they released was uh, username, password, everything from a sign up site for recreation programs for US military. So that's not good. Um, and from that and from that may be the hack from the Malaysian guy, I haven't put it together, they put together these wanted notices. And so if you ever see them, it's it's a green or purple image. It's got a picture of a US military person, their home address, their name, all their contact information. And they, they tweet those out with wanted to kill. Not a good thing. So they made use of this. this that, was, that was a real hack. Um, and they made use of it. And they continue to make use of it. Right? The, there doesn't seem to be a system in place by Twitter to identify those images when they pop up again and automatically take them down. So every time they pop up, every time I see green or purple on my screen, I have to look and see if it's that. And then Twitter doesn't listen to anybody, so you basically have to rally you know, 500 people to report it, to hit the algorithm, to take it down automatically. That's how you get crap off of Twitter. OK, so um, before the systematic hacking that they started to do, they did this hack. This was a company, a website called Chartmill. It's a Belgian company that does like st stock information. And this one, what I wanted to tell you guys is when you're a cyber vigilante, but you're not a cyber person and you don't know anybody and you don't want to call anybody because of your work, you have to figure out what to do. So what am I going to do? I find this, usernames, passwords, all sorts of contact stuff. It's my first run in with what I thought was new. And I'm like, Troy Hunt, have I been pawned? I'll send it to Troy. Troy can add them to have I been pawned. And what Troy does is he tweets it out with the link. and says, has anybody seen this? He sends out the link to the leak. I'm like, I, I, OK. And so somebody pulls some of the data off and tries to log into Chartmill, and they do. And we get this. So it's a real leak. And something's been done about it. Probably not what I would now do about it, but that's what got done about it. This is the systematic uh, hacking process they went through. And this isn't in order, but the, this is what they did. They would pick a country and start tweeting. Soon we're going to tweet, we're going to do whatever under hacks, America under hacks. And then they would hack and deface for a week and this just release a whole bunch of stuff. Right now, uh, or last week was world under hacks. I think it's still world under hacks, but as of right now, they're releasing UK. Uh, data. Or not data, stuff. OK, uh, here's um, from Russia under hacks. Uh, what's cool is these guys apparently all speak Arabic. They haven't recruited any Chechens. So they hack this site, and they get these username, these, these username passwords, and, and emails. But they don't know what the hell it is. So it's just some Russian. We hacked some Russian site. So here you go. Here's the data. Um, now, one thing I'll tell you. When they release like this, they release just screenshots, like maybe 40, 80 records. Once in a while, they'll, they'll put it on a paste bin and they'll, they'll share a link. And what I thought was really interesting to do was to taunt them until they would give me the link to the actual leak, which is why I have some of the actual leaks that I have, because I would just relentlessly tell them they weren't hackers and tell them they were idiots. And you, know, you haven't proved it until you give us the whole thing. And then they'd hand over the whole thing. So I have a couple like that where it actually worked. Because they do understand some English, but they don't understand Russian, which is cool. Um, I don't have the tweet that goes with this, but I know Pear had said, we need Arabic, right, Arabic passwords. Well, here's an Arabic hack, but the passwords are not in Arabic. They're in Latin uh, alphabet. And I had no idea what this was. And I want to tell you some of the sort of tricks that I figured out as I was going along. So I'm looking at this list. I have the whole list, 54,000 records. And I sort it by password. And I find this. See on the right side? And I'm like, what is that? Maybe I should check Saudi telecom. Uh, Saudi because I suspected Saudi, cell phone numbers and see if these are cell phone numbers. And these are the, the prefixes for Saudi. And so you don't have the zero at the beginning. It starts with a 55. And so there are lots and lots and lots of passwords in this leak that are 
obviously cell phone phone numbers. Um, so my guess is it's uh, Saudi Telecom and they're their, their initial password that they assign is your phone number and then you're supposed to go change it. So all the ones that still have the phone numbers are ones where people didn't reset their passwords. I have no idea. I am guessing. All right. But that's the kind of research I tried to do as I found these leaks. And this is the reason I'm here. Because I wanted to show you guys these images because they're funny. So for whatever reason, the extremely observant Islamic State hackers decided to release um, Playboy and other porn site usernames and passwords and, and the URLs. So if you wanted to visit a porn site, you would then have the information. So you know, at the top one is the actual the URL for the porn site, if you want to make a list, take a picture. Um, but I thought these were entertaining because of the passwords. So yeah, so I love sex. So. This one is not as funny, but look at all these great, all great. So they're distributing this to all their very observant Islamic friends, this list of porn sites they can go to. Um, uh, there's a little bit of, so one of the reasons I thought this was really interesting is I had looked through the procurement, procurement passwords, I had looked through the chart mill passwords, and I had in my head the stupid kind of passwords that people make, right? The porn site passwords are different than the other passwords. People insert personal information into their passwords that they probably wouldn't on their employer's website. Um, some of them are just normal, but um, so anyway, here's, this is my favorite. I'm just going to say this because I was sitting back there waiting to talk, laughing. Uh, pipe Leia. Can we see? <laughs> That's my favorite. It's um, about a little below halfway down. I don't know why I find that really amusing. Um, I pulled from the 54, this is also 55,000. Um, here's a small part of the list, right? So <laughs> uh, I think there are 11 or 12 Minecraft. <laughs> uh, yeah. And there are some others. Building the caliphate block by block. The other one I liked in here was Mathematic Man. <laughs> I want to know the guy who goes to the porn site and picks the password Mathematic. Maybe I don't want to know. No. <laughs> this to me was just very entertaining. I, I really wanted to share it, which is why I initially thought I'd come and talk. But I, it's actually gotten more serious. So um, other, oops, other areas they, ha they hacked. All right, they've got the um, addresses for employees of um, the, whatever the communications, the National Communications Office is for France. Um, and then they have a claimed list of Mossad agents. It's not, it's been debunked, but they're still putting it out there. Um, and then, my, this is also one of my favorites, they, they defaced these sites, these sites up here in Iran, up on the top. And my favorite is Turan J. Pizza. Um, so, Periodically, when these sites are defaced, I go back and check and see if they're still defaced, right? So after about 16 hours, I click Turan JP and I see pizza. And then I have to buy pizza. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other thing that I found, and I don't, I don't think I have the link to it, no, is um, Iran Comics. So there's a really awesome comic shop in Iran called Iran Comics, and they have a Telegram channel, and you should get on and get join their channel, because they're great. And they have great new Batman images and stuff. Um, so you know, you take, you take the good with the bad. Um, here are a couple others. You can see their imagery. These are their tweets. So they're including these, these images. Um, and these are the places they usually spell things wrong. Oh, and, and just, if you could see the list of sites, they're just crap. I mean, they, they have no idea, they don't understand what they're hacking. So they just hack stuff and say, these are soldiers, and they're not. And, you know, and the problem is they're putting their names and home addresses and informing the people who read their stuff that they're soldiers. So they may be creating some, some big risks. This is one of those lists, and I've blocked out pretty much the whole list. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you why. So this list pops. This is the only time I went through another person to say the FBI needs to notify these people now because 
whoever is actually on this list is, uh, has very poor operational security. So one of the guys on the list, you can see his first name is Crispin. Crispin, his whole name is there. Crispin has a Facebook account. Crispin uses the feature where you can update where you are as you go to new places, which would be really convenient if a lone wolf hacker, uh, not hacker, hacker type, sorry, lone wolf um, ISIS guy was looking for you. He's just updating every time he gets to a new place. I'm at the health club. Um, so I suggested that somebody tell him to stop doing that while this was out there. Uh, this is an article that I inspired to have written. So uh, this was about France under hacks. After days of promising that they would release the results of their efforts to hack the French, the self-named Islamic State hackers spent two days sharing the results of Googling French government websites. So <laughs> yeah, all right. So these are the debunking images. So these actually went out on Twitter as things were happening. So they say they claim they um, hacked these, and they have the list, you know, they, they put the paste bin out of the, of the Facebook accounts and then somebody checks and it's an old hack. And they claim they hacked NASA, publicly available. They claim they hacked uh, locations of the uh, FBI agents' names and homes, and that was somebody else's hack from 2012. Um, this is a big one to me. Uh, they claim they hacked a bank. They, they did hack that bank, but they claimed it was in the US. The name of it confused them. But the other problem is that they, that day they also hacked another bank. And I'm going to talk about it, but I have no images on purpose, because I'm not going to tell you which bank it is. So they took over a bank's website. And what they did is they disabled all of the, the links on the home page, on all the pages, but on the home page they disabled all the links. The only thing that still worked were the blanks to put in your username and your password, which they would then intercept when people tried to log on. And I pinged against that bank for hours and hours and hours. And finally, despite the fact that I try not to do this, I'm a witness, I'm an observer, I called the bank. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, that was a real hack. They really took control of that bank's website. And they could have gotten the information you know, before it got in and got hashed or got, you know, they're getting it in plain text. OK, so here's another one. Um, they released credit card data, and it was actually from months before. Um, the other thing is they'll release like 100 credit card little screenshots of people's credit card information, and then I would troll them. You know, you can buy this on the dark web for like 25 cents each, and you know, things like that. But they would release those things, and they probably did actually obtain them through hacking, but the whole idea was just to continually suggest that they were idiots and incompetent and just reinforce that. Um, <clears throat> okay, uh, this is what the internet did about the, the, the good guy internet people did about the porn leak. And this is kind of interesting. So these are all the images for the porn leak. And all this is, is I believe it's the quote from the Quran that basically says you shouldn't have done that. And that's it. And tweeted that out, mentioning each of their names and just you know with their hashtags and stuff. OK, so the role of passwords in cyber warfare. Um, OK, so they use passwords to um, hijack other people's accounts. Now, it's not totally true. I don't think they actually need the passwords. They're using another method for hijacking accounts. They don't need to crack the passwords. They need to crack the emails. So when you reset your Twitter account, it shows you the first two characters of your email, the number of characters, little stars, and then the domain. They're guessing that. And then they're, they've got a way of taking over that email account and resetting your password and taking the account. Not sure how it works. I'm not a hacker. Um, but they don't, need, they don't seem to need the passwords. Um, but I do know for sure that one of the, their hacker accounts was stolen because for whatever reason, for that day, they'd use Allah Akbar as a password and somebody guessed it and took their account. So there are, there are password situations. So the reason you take over the accounts is um, to change the narrative, to accuse them of being spies, to whatever you're going to do with it. Um, the big thing that's happened with hijacking accounts is 
um, and not just hijacking them, but it is really with hijacking them, is to lure, lure them to click on links that will give up their location and then tell them that you have their location. And what that then did is created the environment where nobody affiliated with them will click on any links. I want you to think about going to Twitter and never clicking a link. It's, it's not useful, right? And it's not just on Twitter. They've been trained now not to click links at all. And that's based on, a, in large part, on this trolling activity. So what the good guys are doing is also taking over accounts. They take over um, the ISIS accounts and change the narrative. Um, uh, part of the goal of the, the, the trolling is to distract them from what they're doing. So if, they're, if, the, if the hackers are in the middle, hackers are in the middle of releasing a bunch of data, if you can take away a minute of their time or 30 seconds of their time repeatedly and delay it, be annoying, you know, that's, that's trolling, right? Um, but maybe push them off of Twitter because at some point it becomes too annoying, which is what happened, right? So they end up going to Telegram uh, which they occupied for about eight weeks until Pavel Durov got fed up and kicked him out. Um, all right. So this is an example of an account that, and, and this is the bad part, right? So they steal people's accounts to use, and then they say so. This account was get, get hacked by the hackers of the caliphate. This is a hijacked account. This is somebody else's Twitter account. You can identify it pretty easily. If you go back in the history, you can see it was created three years ago. And it's got you know, three tweets about soccer, and then nothing for two years, and then this crap. Um, you'd think Twitter could pick it out, but they don't want to. Out of time. OK, um, so I won't show you this. Well, I will show you this, because this is awesome, cool. Ask me about this if you want to. All right, so the role of, the role of passwords in two slides. Two, two slides. Um, so the role of passwords in cyber warfare. I believe that these guys are going to learn. They're going to get technical help. Uh, they're going to pay people to help them because the caliphate is in bad shape right now financially. They have less and less options for getting money, and I think cyber is going to become more inviting if they can figure out how to get money out of the game. I don't know if they can. Um, and that's why I say there was a bank. They've already had this experience of successfully taking over the bank, um, uh, the bank website. So I'm not going to show you the rest of the slides, but what I'm going to say is the reason this image is here is that pretty much everybody I tell you have to report this crap on the internet says it's not my job. The government will do it and the providers will do it. And I don't know, does everybody on here use YouTube? Nobody uses YouTube? If you find really nasty crap on YouTube, do you go, oh, it's not my problem, or do you hit flag? You hit flag, right? No. <laughs> well, that's the problem. Because YouTube doesn't take it down, the government doesn't take it down unless it's kitty porn, OK? If you want it gone, if it's actually offensive, if you don't want your 12-year-old you know, to be sitting next to you and that whatever it is to pop up, you got to report it. And I'm not saying a recruiting video. Beheadings, just go ahead. Pops up on your YouTube, flag it. You see a link on, on Twitter, just report it. It doesn't take that long. Um, I'm going to jump ahead to one slide because it's really funny. OK. So. Obama can't stop us now that we have all seven Dragon Balls, right? We need to take back the Dragon Balls, right? We can't let them have the Dragon Balls. Thank you. Any questions? You can get me later.